Hey guys, welcome to the second episode of Backyard Critters, where today we are going to be talking about the American Five Line Skink, or Plesteodon fasciatus, and sometimes referred to as the Blue Tail Skink which is actually a name used to refer to several similar species. It can be found in a large portion of the US and even up in Southern Ontario, Canada. Talk about tough. With that out of the way, let's start the video. Let's start off with how to identify it. Juveniles have a bright blue tail, which is why it's commonly referred to as the blue tail skink. However, once they mature into adult, their color changes drastically. You could be looking at a juvenile and an adult and think they were two different species. As mentioned, juveniles have a bright blue tail with five distinct lines running from its head all the way down towards the end of its tail. The lines are yellow whitish with a splitting pattern starting from its head. While young, these are very easy to identify. However, upon reaching maturity, their color is dull. Males will have more of a red head, while females will have more of an overall brown color with some blue left in the tail. Sometimes the lines fade out and they are all brown. This is something I did not know about these critters and I have seen them my whole life. Anyhow, they have a snake-like body with extremely smooth scales, which I assume assists them with digging, as the species will go beneath the soil. They have short, thin limbs with small claws and drag their belly on the ground. Their movements can be slithery, much like a snake, and they are very fast. So, we are mostly looking for a blue tail or five lines that run down the critter's body. There is another skink that can be found in similar areas called a broadhead skink. It's larger and has more orangish looking scales than the American five line skink adults, which are brown. Let's talk about habitat and diet. The American five line skink can be found in high moisture areas like underwood, cinder blocks, tarps in your yard, anything covering grass, or with dense ground foliage, like near the edge of your home. They prefer conditions that are similar to roly-polies or isopods species. Where you find them, you will find one of these skinks. They will dig burrows to sleep and rest, hiding safely beneath the soil. They are rarely seen out in the open and seem to prefer to always be beneath something. Five-line skinks mostly eat small critters, like isopods, crickets, and spiders. While my sources do not ever mention them ingesting isopods, I know as a matter of fact they do, since I had saved one from a cat. Poor thing it dropped its tail and had a large wound on its back. Anyhow, I set up powder blue isopods within its enclosure and have observed her eating them frequently. Powder blue isopods are an established species here in Florida, and so are the skinks, so I assume they eat them naturally, and I have found both species living together in the same area as well. After she was all healed up, I put her in a safe area in the yard, where I knew she would have a better chance not running into a cat in the open. Let's move on to reproduction and wrap the video up. Breeding season for this critter starts around May in the United States. Females can lay up to 18 eggs during the season. About one month after the female is bred, she will begin to lay eggs. They try to find secluded, moist areas. Females can form communal nests, which I think is interesting, because they are mostly solitary creatures. In the nest, the females take turns leaving, and since they take turns, the nest always has guardians to protect the eggs, so it's worthwhile for them to form a colony when necessary. Their eggs are spherical in shape, but most often oval. They start off a whitish color and darken with age. The egg requires external incubation. Females will turn eggs as needed depending on the humidity, which I think is super cool. The eggs incubate for 24 to 60 days, which is dependent on the local temperature warmer being faster, colder taking longer. Once the juvenile reaches roughly two to three years old, it will be mature and ready to start the cycle anew. Well that about does it guys. Tell me in the comments what you think about the series. It would help me greatly. If you haven't your critter loving heart, give this video a like, a subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more videos in the future like this. And as always, from the gizzards and I, have a wonderful day.